In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take a snow drift like this and turn it into something like this. A massive snow fortress with a big kitchen and a large, fully protected area for sleeping at night. Let's check it out. So the first thing you need to do to build a snow cave is find a spot that has very, very deep snow. We use this huge snow drift on the side of a hill. Essentially what happens here is snow is blown over the crest of this hill and deposited on one side. The result is extremely deep snow that layers together and hardens. If you can find a spot like this, you'll be in good shape. You'll know you're at a snow drift because you'll see long overhanging snow ledges, also known as cornices. Make sure you're careful around the cornices, especially if they are large. They break easily and could bury you or your gear. Once you find a good spot for your cave, start digging horizontally into the snow drift. We like to start by digging a large flat platform to stand on. This makes it much easier to work on the cave and it provides a nice place to store your things. This takes quite a while, but it is well worth your time. It's important that you bring many different types of shovels. You will want to bring tough, rugged shovels that can be used to dig dirt with. As you start to dig deeper, the snow will get hard and compacted, so attempting to dig with anything less than a thick metal shovel will be ineffective. Make sure you also have a short-handled shovel, as this will be your money maker to dig once you get inside the cave's close quarters. Once you have plenty of room to stand and work, start digging the tunnel into the cave. Try not to make your tunnel too big to ensure that wind and snow from outside won't be able to get in. This is the part where you'll realize that digging a snow cave is a long, difficult process. As soon as you get into the tunnel a little bit, it becomes difficult to dig because you don't have much elbow room. As mentioned earlier, it's really important that you have a short-handled shovel to get through this section. As soon as you're satisfied with the depth of your tunnel, you will start to dig directly up. You're doing this so that you can later create a cavity for your sleeping quarters. Heat rises, so by creating a sleeping area which is higher than your entrance, you'll be able to stay a little bit warmer when a few people cram in there. This little animation demonstrates how the warmer, sheltered air will separate from the cold, outside air. Digging up from the tunnel to the cave is probably going to be the toughest part of your whole project. It's really helpful to have another person close by who can remove the snow debris as you start to carve out the cave. Once you have dug vertical enough that you can stand up straight, you will then dig the actual snow cave. We chose to dig parallel to the snow drift to avoid hitting the ground as a result of digging too deep. Just be mindful of where the end of the snow drift is so that you don't punch a hole in your cave. The goal here is to dig a cave that is large enough for everyone in your group to lie down flat. If you have a group of more than four or five people, it might be a good idea to dig a separate room or even a separate cave. You don't want the cave to be too big because it may begin to lack structural integrity at some point. We haven't dared figuring out what that point is. A huge help when digging your snow cave is to put a big sled at the bottom of your tunnel. That way, you can drop the snow chunks into the sled and someone else can easily remove them from the cave and put them out of the way. Trust me when I say this, there will be many, many chunks of snow. While a couple people are working on the snow cave, another person can work on the kitchen and hangout area. This is a total luxury, but we like to include this area because it makes it super convenient for cooking meals and spending time with the group. Basically what you are doing here is digging out a dome type cave with benches and shelves. You can get creative with how elaborate you want it to be. You'd be surprised by how much of a difference having a secondary shelter makes. Not only does it provide a nice spot to sit, but it also provides great protection from falling snow and gusty wind. The last thing you should do is put a few finishing touches on your snow cave. Make sure the roof of your snow cave has a nice arched build to it. This makes sure it will be strong and durable. Then take your shovel and smooth out all spots where the snow is pointy. When you get several people in the cave at once, the air starts to warm up. 
Sometimes this can cause the snow to melt and therefore drip all over the people inside. Removing pointy tips of the snow helps avoid this issue. We also like to dig out a few shelves so that everyone has a nice place to store their things. Again, this is a great chance to get creative. A word of caution is that it's incredibly important that you don't sleep in your snow cave immediately after you dig it. You are going to get completely soaked from crawling around in the snow all day. It's impossible to stay warm at night if you are wet, so go home, take a hot shower, dry out your clothes, and return the next day to sleep in your cave. All right, so the three of us have been digging for about six hours, and we have made a lot of progress. Right behind me here, we have a very nice kitchen area with benches and tables so that we can be protected from the elements while we eat dinner. And then we have the tunnel over here. Um, you can't really see all the details of the cave since it's all white in there, so tomorrow when we put all of our stuff inside, I will give a tour of the inside of that. So now we are gonna head home, dry out all of our wet clothes, take a shower and get some rest, and we'll come back tomorrow evening and make dinner and sleep in our snow cave. I will see you then. All right, it's the next day. Uh, now it's Sunday and we're back at our snow cave. Everything seems to be pretty much the way we left it. Um, this drift right here did come down a little bit overnight. I think constantly the drift is kind of like rolling in like this on itself. But for the most part, everything looks great. Our cave is still here and kitchen's still looking good. So we're gonna set up our sleeping arrangements and um, make dinner, just hang out, enjoy the evening, get ready for bed. And then tomorrow we're gonna be doing a little bit of like snowboarding, just kind of play in the snow, hang out as long as we want and then head home. Once you finish lugging in all your gear, go crazy with making your snow shelter as luxurious as possible. You worked hard for this and now is your time to enjoy it. The first thing we did was set up our sleeping area. The key to staying warm in the cave is to insulate yourself as well as possible. It's important to have a thick layer of insulation separating you from the cold snow under you. We put a tarp down and then some cardboard followed by a couple air mattresses. Make sure you get insulated air mattresses so you don't end up with cold air under you. We finished off the setup with some warm down sleeping bags and a couple blankets just in case. In the kitchen area, we put a foam sleeping pad on top of our benches. This provides a perfect spot to sit without having your rear end get cold and wet. I also like to cut up a few coat hangers and use the wire to create hooks in the snow. Then you can install lighting throughout your shelter and hang your kitchen items as well. My final piece of advice is to make sure you put your shovels inside the snow cave when you go to bed. Remember, you are sleeping inside of an active snow drift. It wouldn't take a very big snowstorm to seal up your entrance. Okay, so we've settled down for the night here in our snow cave. This is an awesome shelter. Um, it's pretty windy outside and very cold. And it's cold in here too, but it's it's actually quite a bit warmer than it is outside. And there's absolutely no wind in here. And you can't even hear any noise from outside. So this is a great way to survive the night in a winter place like this. So we have got ourselves uh, wrapped up in our sleeping bags, quite a few blankets and everything. And it's actually pretty cozy in here. So. We're gonna spend the night, and in the morning, I'll let you know how it went. Well, good morning. 
Um, the three of us were able to make it through the night just fine in the snow cave. We were actually quite warm inside of our sleeping bags and wrapped up in a bunch of blankets. Um, this was an awesome shelter from the elements. If you ever need to have a survival shelter in a winter conditions, this is a great way to do it. So now we are going to make some breakfast and hang out, play in the snow and just enjoy ourselves for the day and uh, stay as long as we want and then we'll head home. Okay, well that just about puts our snow cave adventure in the books. Hopefully this video was helpful for you if you're planning on going snow caving and that's something that you're interested in. Hopefully you can follow some of those tips that we covered in this video. So if you enjoyed this video, you might consider subscribing to my channel. I make a lot of videos about travel and adventure like this. And if you have any other ideas for tutorial type videos that I could make, feel free to put those in the comments down below. So thanks so much for spending your time to watch this video and I will see you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,